Welcome to the Wickedly Smart Women podcast, featuring stellar conversations with emerging and established Wickedly Smart Women. Thanks for joining us today as we celebrate women who are committed, care deeply, and have the courage to take action and create conscious change all around the world. Now here's your Wickedly Smart host, Angel B. Hartwell. Welcome to another episode of the Wickedly Smart Women podcast, where we celebrate Wickedly Smart Women and provide our listeners with a wealth of wisdom along with immediately actionable steps to be smarter, spunkier, and more successful in their impact and their leadership. This is your host, Angel B. Hartwell, and today we welcome our special guest, Laura Brown. Laura is a corporate trainer author, and certified business coach with more than 20 years of experience in global human resources and management development. She has trained and coached female leaders from Fortune 100 companies, written for Forbes, and has been quoted as a business expert in publications including Cosmopolitan, Family Circle Magazine, and USA Weekend. Laura is the author of 10 books, including Increase Your Income, Seven Rules for Women Who Want to Make More Money at Work. She now helps women to be more confident, more successful, and make more money through online training programs. So I am so delighted to have you here today. I met Laura at the National Publicity Summit, and she was really a standout speaker, and I got very excited to bring her onto the show. So welcome to the show, Laura. Oh, Angel, thank you so much. I am so excited to be here today. Well, you and I share a similar vision. We both want women to increase our income. Everybody, all the women out there, please increase your income. So I want to start today, Laura, by asking you, were you always, when you were maybe a kid, were you like the entrepreneurial kid? Were you the kid who was paying attention to the money in the family? Were you the one, like my mom actually taught me how to do bookkeeping when I was seven and had me making change for the ladies in her in-house yarn shop that we had. So was that you or did you come to this in some other way? Oh, Angel, I wish that had been me. No, that wasn't me at all. No, I mean, I had a job from 16, but I wasn't an entrepreneur. No, the way I actually got to this is early in my career. I thought, I need to make some more money. So I I got myself together. I walked into my boss's office. I asked for a raise and he immediately shut me down and said, no, I mean, right away. It was awful. I was so embarrassed. I went home and I thought, I'm going to just going to quit my job. I don't even think I can go into work again the next day. But a friend of mine, I talked her through it and she said, well, why did he say you're not getting a raise? I said, I don't know. I don't know. He just said, I can't get a raise. And so I went in the next day and I talked to him and I asked him, well, you know, why am I not getting a raise? And he said, oh, Laura, you'll get a raise in a couple of months when it's raise time. And honest to goodness, that was the first time I'd ever heard that there was a raise time in my company. And then from that, I started realizing, and I had a conversation with him and he said, uh, because I asked him, well, so what do I need to do? And he said, no, you'll be fine. You'll get a raise. I said, no, what do I need to do to get the best raise possible? And then I started sharing that with my female friends. And I started learning how hard it was for everybody. So that started me on my journey. I'm afraid not being an entrepreneur at 12. (laughs) Well, I love this because what you're pointing to here, Laura, is something that is, you know, kind of ubiquitous across the board, regardless of whether you're in a leadership position in a corporate environment or whether you're being entrepreneurial. There is so many times that we don't know what we don't know. And so what I'm hearing here from you is that you actually needed to like put yourself back in the game, right? So I'd love to have you talk about what inspired you to not quit the job, but instead go back in and (laughs) and say, you know, what happened here? Yeah. Well, and really what inspired me was a friend of mine. So Mm -hmm. I called a girlfriend of mine that night, you know, and I was, oh, I can't believe, and I was complaining and complaining. And she did let me complain a little bit. And then she said, okay, seriously, Laura. And that's when she said, you know, why did he say no? And that's when I started thinking about it. And really also, I really liked my job. I really liked my boss. I mean, years and years later, I'm still in contact with him. He's a great guy. And I really didn't want to quit, but I was so thoroughly embarrassed. I thought, I got to do something. 
something's got to change. I can't just, you know, go into my office and keep my head down for the next couple of weeks. I need to figure out what's going on. Mm, Yeah, beautiful. Well, it's interesting, too, that you bring up complaining, because I think that's something that a lot of women in particular, I call it whining Mm -hmm. over wine, (laughs) whining (laughs) over wine, right? So so for somebody who's listening, Laura, who might be, you know, like, who are your best people? Are they people who are in a management position and they want to move up or are they in a place where they are really happy with their job, but they need more money? Like who are the right people that you actually help? Yeah. The the people that I actually help typically have been in their career for a number of years. They're not necessarily management. They could be under management and it really doesn't have that much to do with the, the promotion or the level. It has to do with the fact that they don't feel that they're being valued by the amount of money that they're being paid. And what typically happens for these women is they just say, you know what, I'm just going to go get another job. And there are a lot of people leaving right now. And I talked to them and I'm like, well, why don't you just ask your boss for a raise? Oh no, that's too hard. I would rather just go and quit and find, you know, again, get, maybe I'll get a promotion that way or I'll get more money. It's just easier to find a new job again. So that's the women that are sort of in the I would say that have been in their career for eight to 10 years. Now, having said that, though, I also have coached college students that are going for their first job, and I help them to negotiate the best salary for their first job. So I help people that are all over. Mm, well, it's interesting. I, I just really want to point out that, you know, this show is evergreen. So somebody might be listening to this five years from now when mm-hmm. the job market is suddenly a totally different situation. So I'd love to have you speak about that because. What I'm hearing, if I'm hearing this correctly, Laura, is it actually doesn't matter whether or not it's a a great market for you to jump to the next Mm -hmm. job or whether it's a tight market for that. Mm -hmm. What really matters is asking. Really, that's what matters. So I'd love to have you talk a little bit about some of the things that you see in your women that are indicators to you that you help them with to get over the reticence Mm -hmm. to ask. Oh, absolutely. So, well, let me give you a story from just a couple of months ago. So there was a woman and she decided she really didn't like her current job. And so it was really time for her to leave. It wasn't an initial bet money, but of course she wanted to make more money. So she was looking at this other job. And so she knew that they liked her and she was just about ready to get a, a salary offer. And so I coached her. And so I told her, As soon as they give you the salary offer, thank them, remind them why you're the right candidate, and then pause and say these four words. Is there any flexibility? And she's like, I don't know that's going to work. I said, trust me. Okay, go ahead and do it. So she did it. She said, is there any flexibility? And she paused. And by the way, you have to stop after that because the important part is you don't want to say, I know it's it's a tough market or I know that it's a good salary. No, no, no. Just stop talking. And so she said, you won't believe what the woman said. And I thought, yes, I will. She said, you won't believe what the woman said. She said, of course there's flexibility. And then she went on, she had a conversation. She got a 15% increase out of this. But what she said is, I can't believe if I didn't ask that that woman wouldn't have told me that there's flexibility. But the fact is, and I talked to, you know, lots of recruiters and stuff, recruiters say, that's not my job to tell people that there is flexibility. So you have to ask. And if the person says, I don't know if there's flexibility, you say, well, would you be able to check? And Mm. then just see, it won't hurt. So that's if you're looking for a job. But let's say you're in your current job and you like it. So I worked with somebody else recently. She really liked her job. She didn't want to leave, but she was upset about the money. And so one of the things that we don't think about is we don't think about working with our boss because a lot of times we think our boss is the reason we're not making money. And from my years and years in corporate human resources, let me tell you, your boss is probably your biggest ally. Your boss wants to give you more money. Your boss wants you to stay, but they have to talk to HR and they have to convince their boss and a compensation committee. So I always say, work with your boss like you're working on a project. So if you had a project that needed a higher budget, wouldn't you partner with your boss and talk about what can we do to get a higher budget? Of course you would. So work with your boss and say, what can I give you? How can I help you in order to get the raise that I want? And sometimes it's information that you've got. Sometimes it's statistics. Sometimes it's customer emails, whatever it is. But think about how can I help my boss who probably really, really does want to give me a raise? 
Mm, Beautiful. I love it. So what I heard there, I'm just going to quickly recap it is first, you've got to be willing to ask, you know, like that's baseline. You've got to be willing to ask and not, you know, I think many of us still have the fantasy and I know you, you know, one of your things is (laughs) salary Cinderella stories. We have this fantasy that the fairy salary mother is going to come yes. along and yes. bonk us over the head. Oh, look at how wonderful you are. Let me give you a raise. Right. <laughs> and so step one is really beginning to become courageous in the asking. But mm-hmm. the, the next thing I heard was that there's got to be some questions that they may not know. Like, you know, mm-hmm. the, our listeners may not know the right questions to ask or even, you know, the right way to ask them. So I heard two mm-hmm. things there, the asking mm-hmm. of the the asking, the asking of specific questions, and then the way of asking such that there's a pause or a gap or a, mm-hmm. like, you don't need to justify yourself. You don't need mm-hmm. to make any kind of case necessarily. But what I am also hearing, the last piece I heard was to partner, like to really, yes. to make it a collaborative experience rather than a combative experience. Is That's that what a I great way to say it. Yes. And I want to go back to one of the first things you said, because it's so key. You have to clearly ask, because I worked with this other woman and she said, well, that's not going to work because I already tried it. And I said, okay, well, help me to understand. Tell me what you said. And she said, well, I went to my boss and I said, it would be really nice to make more money. And you know what he did? He laughed and he said, yes, it would be. Okay. And so I pointed out to her that really wasn't an ask. He heard it just as a comment. And so she really needed to to go to him, which is what she did later on and say, I want to talk to you about getting a salary increase. Now he heard that and now he was able to listen. But the other thing is you also have to be, be ready to hear no. And so that's really when you said step up and be courageous. That's what a lot of times stops women. They're like, oh, but what if I hear no? And I tell them, yeah, but what if you hear yes? Mm. Isn't a few minutes of being uncomfortable worth a couple of thousand bucks? I know it is for me. And so a lot of times it just, we're just so afraid. And we think if I hear no, again, if I hear no, I'm going to have to quit my job. But what I learned and what I teach women is no doesn't mean no forever. No means no for right now, just like I did. Then you can go back and say, well, help me to understand what's getting in the way. What needs to change? What needs to go on? What else do you need? And that could be the great conversation that gets you a really good raise in a couple of months. Mm, Beautiful. Well, we're going to have to take a quick break here. But when we come back, we're going to let you all know where you can get in touch with Laura. Right now, though, Wickedly Smart Women, we could use your help. If you are enjoying the show and want us to stay on the air, please consider making a donation at www.wickedlysmartwomen.com. We'd also like to ask you to share with your lovely lady friends who you think might benefit benefit from our content. Help a gal out and let your sisters, mothers, daughters, friends, and colleagues, especially those colleagues who are in a corporate environment for this particular episode, know about our show so that we can serve them too. I am celebrating and saying thank you, thank you, thank you to my amazing team behind the scenes because we have just won our fifth award. We just found out last night that we won an award of distinction from the Communicator Awards, the 28th Annual Communicator Awards. And the category was under Featured Podcast Host. So I'm excited. I actually got an award for me. (laughs) So I'm grateful for that. And, you know, that's because of you, listeners. So I do want to say a big, huge thank you to all of our listeners who are downloading, rating, and reviewing. We're welcoming thousands and thousands of downloads from all over the world. We're about to hit another milestone with that. And I want to shout out this week to our listeners in... We got 98 countries downloading now. So let me pick, let's see, Croatia, the Czech Republic, and China, all the seas today. And we'll be right back with Laura Brown. The Wickedly Smart Women podcast is brought to you by the Wealthy Life Mentor. Women, are you on the edge knowing that life is calling you to make a change? Are you ready to be part of the evolution of what it means to be a wickedly smart woman creating your wealthy life by design, a life that is an extraordinary work of art? Angel B. Hartwell, the Wealthy Life Mentor, is hired by women in transition. 
Women just like you who want to break through to their brilliance, become clear on the value of their wisdom, and embody a beauty-filled, balanced life of shameless self-expression. Discover your wealthy life readiness by taking the quiz at quiz.wealthylifementor.com. And we are back with Laura Brown. Before we went to the break, we were talking about all the right things to do to get your raise. And you can find out more about Laura and what she's offering at careertipsforwomen.com. That's careertipsforwomen.com. We will have that for you in the show notes. And Laura has offered a very special coupon code. You can put in the coupon code SMART and that will get you, I believe you said 20% off on any of the investments that you might make into any of her trainings that she has there on the site. So we will have all of that information for you in the show notes. So Laura, let's talk now about what they will find when they get to your site. Ah, okay. Well, the the big thing that they'll find is I have online courses there. So we've talked about how to get a raise. We've talked about information on how to get a better starting salary. But I also have courses on things like confidence and how to communicate because one of my books is on communication and how to get heard at work. So things like that. You'll also get links to the books. But really, my focus is on training and helping women to really get the information. They need to be more successful. Beautiful. I love it. All right. So now I have to ask the magic question because we have listeners who are both, you know, we have listeners who are in corporate environments and we have listeners who are entrepreneurial. And I think we're all the CEO of our own life. So Mm -hmm. what I'd like to ask you now, Laura, is at what point did you make the decision to take the flying leap out of the corporate cubicle spaces Mm -hmm. and into building your own business and entrepreneurship? Well, so this is really funny. So I did not take the leap at first. I was pushed. So years and years ago, years and years ago, I lost my job. And so, I mean, I, you know, I needed to make money. I needed to pay the mortgage. I had a little kid. And so I, I took a, basically a contracting job and suddenly I thought, oh man, I don't have a boss. I love this. And then I started working on my own business for years and years and years. Love that. And then after a bunch of years, I thought, you know, I'm teaching women how to be more successful in corporate. Maybe I should go back to corporate for a couple of years. And maybe it's not as bad as I thought. Well, it's wrong. So I went back to corporate for a couple of years. And for a couple of years, I really did like it. And then thought, you know what? This is really not the place for me. As much as, you know, I loved my colleagues and stuff. My place is helping women to be more successful and helping women in all different, different groups, different companies, small companies, large companies, entrepreneurs. I work with them. So yeah, so I left the corporate world again. Yeah, well, you were to be an entrepreneur. You were in and out of corporate to get the map, right? You went there to get the map, not to have, (laughs) not to live there your whole life. Apparently, (laughs) (laughs) that is absolutely it. Yes. Yeah, beautiful. So I'd love to have you speak just briefly about, you know, have you found in your own life that you were able to apply some of the principles you teach your corporate women to yourself as you made that leap. Yes. And so as an entrepreneur, because a lot of times, you know, I talk about corporate, people think that it doesn't have to do with entrepreneurs, but it does. Because mm-hmm. entrepreneurs, I've talked to so many women that are entrepreneurs, they are afraid to raise their prices. They're not sure how much to charge. And so it's really the same thing. Again, you you think about, first of all, how can I ask? And by the way, if you're an entrepreneur, one of the things that I always ask, because I do projects for companies, And it's always tough to decide how much charge. And what you do is you say, so what's the budget? And surprisingly enough, I've had plenty of people give me the budget. And I say, okay, I can work with that. And there have been a bunch of times where the budget was way more than I was going to ask. And so, yeah, so I've been able to use these same ideas, including, I mean, I have seven different rules, including the rule, it's only business, it's not personal. Mm -hmm. That if a company doesn't want to pay me what I think I'm worth, it's not personal, it's their budget. And so I've been able to take these things and use them personally. Beautiful. I love it. It's not personal. It's their budget. I Mm -hmm. love it. All right. So I'm being inspired right now, Laura, to talk because I think we need to about it's still a situation where 
primarily the men are making the decisions about the budget. The men are making the decisions about who gets a raise. The men are, I mean, it's way better, I'm sure, than it was when you and I were both way back at the (laughs) beginning, where, you know, it was a lot more, even more restrictive. But I'd love Mm -hmm. to have you speak a little bit to how you support your women to, yeah, be in an environment that may not be as nurturing for them (laughs) and still get what they require in order Mm -hmm. to thrive. Yeah, I'm so glad you asked that. And actually in corporations, I've trained female leaders, like just classes of female leaders. And there was always that question like, well, why do women need some sort of separate training course? And my answer was always, because we're going to talk about things that a lot of times men get informally and these women need formally. Now I'm making some big generalizations here, so understand that. So there's a lot of really good research out there. And I talk to women about the fact that in general, okay, big generalizations, in general, men in corporations tend to be more competitive and women tend to be more cooperative. And so the first thing you need to do is simply recognize that when you see it, then you see the corporate landscape differently. So, you know, when your colleague you know, speaks over you in a meeting and says, you know, I'm going to take that project instead of you, instead of feeling really upset about like taking it personally, you're like, okay, well, he saw that as a way to to move up. I need to understand that, that that may be the way to get ahead in my company. So first of all, recognize it. Then take a look and see what can I do that I'm comfortable with? I don't want you to change who you are, but just recognize in that corporation, if you're going to stay there, that there are certain rules that are not obvious, but you need to take a look at the successful people, whether they're successful men or successful women, and say, what are the successful people in my company doing? And can I do something similar to that and still keep my own values? So that to me is really important. Understand the differences, push yourself a little bit to do some of these things that you may not be comfortable with and see what happens. Mm, Beautiful. I love it. So this is a little bit deeper into that, Laura, like You know, really what I'm hearing there is you help people to stay in their own integrity around how they're going to show up. So it's kind of like a multi-pronged question, like how do we stay in our integrity and make changes in environments that are maybe less than enthusiastic about our value system? Or yeah. do you think it's better? And do you advise your people to just pack up and go? Like, where is the mm. magic line yeah. that says, I'm going to actually take a stand here, or mm-hmm. I'm going to step out? Yeah. So that's a great question. That to me, it's a balancing act. And so first, and, and again, when I have, you know, women in my classes, I would say, I don't, I, I show them what the research is between men and women. And I say, I don't want you to become a man. Never. I don't want you to, you need to be who you are. But sometimes it's by looking at that, that you realize really what my values are. That, for example, my values really are cooperative. I need to be on a team that's cooperative and not people that are trying to stab each other in the back. So I first need to, to recognize that. Then I say, okay, then see what small changes you can make in your company. Don't talk about big changes. Talk about some small changes. And it may simply be that you partner with somebody else, male or female, that to help you to work on a project and start to be cooperative together. And then see what happens. Because before you just leave and say, well, you know, my company isn't worth it. Again, test it out. Try some small things. If you start to make some changes, Maybe it is the place for you to stay because maybe now you're the one that's going to actually make the changes everybody else needs. Or if the changes aren't working or it takes too much energy, you know, if at the end of the day, yeah, you you push the rock a little forward, but, you know, it's just sucking you dry, then it's the time to leave and take a look. Now, the other thing I would say, though, because I was in tech for many, many years, the question is, is it just your company or is your industry? Mm -hmm. So don't just jump into another company in the same industry thinking it's going to be better when it may not be. But at the same time, I don't want you to stay in some place that feels toxic just because you think, well, there's no other place out there until you go out and take a look. So it really is all up to you. Mm, Well, so what I'm hearing there is that it it really requires these women, our women listeners, to be even more self-aware 
even more self-aware and to really understand what is actually the kind of environment that mm-hmm. is going to serve and support them. You know, one of the things that when you think about a corporate environment, the employee is investing their life and the corporation is investing a lot of resources. So when that match is initially made, you know, down the road a piece, it becomes expensive for both people, you know, for mm-hmm. both sides of the equation. So in the last couple of minutes that we have, Laura, I'd love to hear like one of your favorite, favorite success stories from helping somebody that will really call out the exact mm-hmm. right person that's going to raise their hand and come visit you. Okay. I, I got to tell two short ones. One okay. was... There was, there was one woman I coached and she was all nervous about it. She was in a tech company and she asked her boss and he immediately said, oh yeah, I think that's a good idea. You deserve a raise. And the funny part was she got mad. And she's like, well, why didn't you say anything before? And he said, well, because you honestly, his answer was because you didn't ask. I've been thinking Mm -hmm. about it. And she said to me later, he's been thinking about this for months, but he didn't do anything about it until I asked him. And so I just want you to think of it, focusing on no. Chances are, honestly, the answer is going to be maybe when you ask because and they're going to need some more time and things like that. But the answer could be yes. And the other thing I want to say, just a wonderful story. I was talking with this one woman. She was looking for another job and she was a friend of a friend. So I was just chatting with her and she said, is it okay for me to negotiate? And like she put her head down and she made herself like, is that even okay? Like, yes, of course it's okay. What do you think other successful people are doing? And so I I coached her. And so by just asking that question that I gave you, which is, is there any flexibility? She got an extra $5,000 the next day. And so she went from making herself small and really questioning, and this was last year, really questioning, is it okay for me to talk about money to, man, I just made an extra $5,000. So anybody can do this. And even if you're feeling small and feeling like, I don't know if I can do it, go ahead. What do you have to lose? Be a little uncomfortable for a few minutes, but boy, you could get like big returns on it. Ah, beautiful. I love it, Laura. Well, we could talk all day about how easy it is for women in particular to make themselves small and keep their mouth shut and not ask and the magic that needs to happen in order to blossom out and actually become fruitful. So We are at the end, unfortunately. So listeners, we do love feedback. Please let us know what you think of today's show by calling into our listener line. We'll have that number for you in the show notes, or you can send in questions or guest suggestions to listeners at wickedlysmartwomen.com. I want to thank you all for tuning in. Keep your ears open. And remember, you are a wonderful woman. Thanks for tuning in, downloading, and listening. Be sure to rate and review Wickedly Smart Women on Apple Podcasts and share with other women who can benefit from today's episode. Wickedly Smart Women is the premier podcast series for informing, activating, and inspiring the leader who carries profound wisdom and knows that now is the time to welcome wealth. We welcome your feedback and guest suggestions and invite you to subscribe to our mailing list to be notified of each new episode at wickedlysmartwomen.com.